The recent decline in relations between Russia and the West has put ship versus ship warfare back on the table. After more than a decade of supporting land wars in the Middle East and Central Asia, the U.S. Navy is reinvesting in the core mission of sinking ships. The U.S. Navy is expanding this capability but at the same time introducing a new class of ship, the guided missile destroyer USS Zumwalt, designed primarily to support land warfare. Meanwhile in Russia, Moscow is still trying to squeeze life out of its Kirov-class battlecruisers. The gigantic surface ships, all nearly 30 years old, have aging but still generally effective armament, and are still capable of carrying out their primary mission, attacking very large enemy ships, especially aircraft carriers. The Zumwalt class is the latest class of U.S. Navy guided missile destroyer. The three ships, Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, Michael Mansour and Lyndon B. Johnson, are optimized for naval gunfire support. The ships are the first true stealth ships in Navy service, with flattened, angular features designed to reduce their radar signatures. The Zumwalts will displace 14,000 tons, making them the largest U.S. Navy destroyers ever. Their size and weight is largely a function of the ship's stealthiness, which requires virtually everything to be hidden underneath a radar-defeating exterior. The 610-foot-long zoom vault allegedly has a radar signature equivalent to a small fishing vessel, and a maximum speed of 30 knots. Another contributing factor to the weight is the suite of weapons and sensors. The n spy 3 multifunction radar offers superior medium to high-altitude search performance over previous radars and can direct standard SM-2 surface-to-air missiles. The Zoom Vault class has 80 vertical launch silos for launching SM-2 and evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, Tomahawk land attack missiles and AS Rock anti-submarine rockets. Although Zoom Vault may not be capable of area air defense, although there was initially some question, it appears it will indeed be equipped with the SM-2 it will be more than capable of defending itself. The Navy placed an order for 18 SM-2 hour missiles, likely for the first ship of the class. It can also fit four shorter range of Vault Sea Sparrow missiles in every missile silo, giving it a theoretical maximum loadout of 320 ESSM. Given the atrophying of the Navy's anti-surface capability and the land wars of the early 21st century, it's no surprise Zoom Vault is deficient in as the anti-ship mission. There are no Harpoon missiles on the stealth destroyers, which do not fit in missile silos and must be accommodated on angled tube launchers, typically located on the main deck. The ship's two 155mm advanced gun systems, which have a range of up to 83 miles and a rate of fire of 10 rounds per minute, have an anti-surface capability and would do tremendous damage against lightly armored surface ships of today. Zoom Vault's opponent, the battlecruiser Kirov, is a relic from another era. Constructed in the late 1980s to quickly neutralize American aircraft carriers, the ships are designed for an offensive mission. At the same time, they have formidable anti-air capabilities. The Kirovs were the largest non-aircraft carrier warships built by any post-war navy. Each was 826 feet long, nearly as long as the World War II battleships Bismarck and Iowa, but weighed just 24,000 tons. This was in large part due to their use of nuclear power for propulsion instead of boilers and turbines, giving Kirov and her sisters a top speed of up to 32 knots. Another reason, Kirov traded heavy guns, the 9 16-inch guns of the battleship Iowa together weighed 1,075 tons, not including turret, armor, and ammunition, for missiles. For offensive armament, Kirov has 20 gigantic P-700 granite anti-ship missiles, each granite is approximately 33 feet long and weighs more than 15,000 pounds, making them practically unmanned airplanes. Granite had a range of 300 miles at Mach 2.5 and a 1,653-pound warhead. Initial targeting information could be provided by another platform, such as the Kirov itself, the Kirov's helicopter, or land-based patrol aircraft such as the 295 Bear. It could even be provided by the Legenda satellite targeting system, which was specifically established to feed target data to the Kirov and Granite combination. Kirovs were also designed with air defense protection in mind, each armed with a generous arsenal of defensive missiles to keep her alive, at least until her granites were expended. 96S-300F long-range surface-to-air missiles formed an outer air defense. 192-3K95 and 44K33 short-range surface-to-air missiles created a layer in Saiban, and as a last resort, the ships had 6 AK-630 close-in weapon systems equipped with 30mm Gatling guns. In a battle between the two ships, which would prevail? Let's assume place the two ships on the high seas at the maximum range of either side's anti-ship weapons, 300 miles, the range of Kirov's granite missiles,
unlike previous scenarios, will not assume that each ship knows where the other is, but that eventually, one will find the other. Kirov has the Legenda satellite system working for it. But Legenda is a radar satellite, and Zoom Vault is a stealthy destroyer with the radar signature of a small fishing boat. Both ships are furiously searching for the other, embarked helicopters scanning the ocean beyond the horizon. In this situation the stealth destroyer has the distinct advantage over the majestic, but non-stealthy battlecruiser. Zoom Vault's helicopters detect Kirov first, sending positional data back to their mothership. Kirov detects the helicopters but is unaware of Zoom Vault's actual location. If Zoom Vault's stealth can hold, theoretically it can close to within gun range of a Kirov. The Russian battlecruiser, on the other hand, will want to hang back and strike Zoom Vault from a distance. Unfortunately for the Russian side, everything about Kirov systems, from its satellite targeting to the guidance systems of its granite missiles are radar guided. Kirov could launch her missiles in a direction she suspects Zoom Vault is at. The active homing radars of the granites would still have to be able to pick up the American destroyer's tiny radar signature. Even if the granites could lock onto Zoom Vault, the latter has the air defenses to deal with it. Equipped with at least 18 SM-2 medium-range air defense missiles and several dozen evolved Sea Sparrow short-range air defense missiles, Zoom Vault could probably knock down most of the granites. Can Zoom Vault engage with its guns? It depends. At their maximum 83-mile range, a long-range land attack projectile fired by the advanced gun system would take 161.89 seconds to reach the target. Even if Zoom Vault knew precisely where Kirov was, the shells would be traveling much too slow to hit the moving battlecruiser. The GPS guidance of the AGS wouldn't help much either, unless Zoom Vault were able to observe Kirov moving at steady speed and bearing, and adding a little Kentucky windage. That might be good for the first barrage, but once Kirov started zigzagging it would be impossible to get a beat on her. The end result of this scenario, it's a tie. Neither side can accurately target the other. In the future new weapons such as the long-range anti-ship missile would give the Zoom Vault a real edge? Alternately, a 155mm projectile capable of receiving terminal guidance from an unmanned aerial vehicle would be useful. Zoom Vault, unable to get close enough to target with guns and Kirov, Unable to use its radar-guided weapons, both break off to fight another day. <laughs>